There is a small piece of Europe you may have overlooked. A terrain of mountains, forest, and dramatic bays. A land where the islands hold stories both horrible and heartbreaking. Each an easy sail away from the last. A place of secretive villas and bunkers from a bygone era. A country of prisoners and pirates, of hearty food and strong drink, and of legendary stories that dig deep into a concept we call love. A story which will require high adventure to capture on this Road Less Traveled. It's this last concept I will explore in a pocket-sized nation the world calls Montenegro. Pursuing love is a noble affair, fit for only the most chivalrous. So I've brought my finest steed, Rocinante, and my loyal cameraman, Sancho. Before this quest is over, I shall slay a terrible beast and find my Dulcinea. I'm Jonathan Legg. I'm an explorer, a globetrotter on a continual quest for the unusual, exotic, and adventurous side of life. My destination is the core, the very beating heart of a place. It's the search for the wildest, most unpredictable experiences. Moments that widen and deepen our perspective of the world we live in. What happens on our journey, I don't know. But one thing I do know is this. We're sticking to the road less traveled. To make all these Don Quixote references clear, I'll begin my journey by driving down the southern coast towards Ulsing. Coming into town, I catch a unique contrast. <sighs> kind of an interesting sight here. You've got a mosque and then above it on the hill a partisan monument to the liberation of the area from Hitler's and Mussolini's armies. Now the Montenegrin uprising against the Axis forces started just down the way here, and I guess it was a very spirited resistance. The partisan monument is built in the style of brutalism. You see it all over the Balkans. It comes from the French word brute, as in raw, raw concrete. A lot of people find it off-putting, cold, but personally I find it intriguing and evocative. But the town's most fascinating structure is up on a hill overlooking the sea. Check this out. See the little contrast here? You got a little church, which is Byzantine. Byzantine Empire was the new Rome. They'd embraced Christianity since Constantine. But then later came the Ottomans, and they added something to this church, a minaret to turn it into a mosque. It was from this bygone pirate era that some intriguing stories spring. The pirates in this town would launch off to attack ships traveling down the coast, seizing from them both their material possessions and occasionally their flesh. Human slaves kept in these prisons and then brought to the square for auction including one very famous name. Miguel de Cervantes, the author of Don Quixote. 
So the slaves are brought here to the main square where they're stood on a block and auctioned off. This fine young Spanish man, a hundred gold coins for him. This strong Venetian, a hundred and fifty. Cervantes gets led up. The crowd starts auctioning, but at the last minute the pirate master runs down and pulls him off. He's gotten word. This guy's actually a famous figure. They could fetch a lot of money, a lot. So they put him back in the prisons and they wait and they wait and he stays here a long time. And during this period, possibly something rather lovely occurs. Cervantes may have fallen in love. Can you imagine one day you're out on the sea bringing cargo to a foreign land, looking forward to getting back to your wife one day. Next minute you're seized and you're brought behind these bars, no way to get news to her, family doesn't know where you are, all your rights taken away from you. Thank God those days are over. Or are they? According to a 2017 survey, there are 25 million people in human trafficking today. It's worse than ever. It's just underground. You see, back in that era, Ultzing was called Dulcinea, and the main love interest of Don Quixote is Dulcinea. So, thus began the legend that Cervantes, while here, fell in love with a local girl whom he based the love interest of Don Quixote on. Now here's the thing. Historical records say Cervantes was captured by pirates, but he was brought to Algeria. Locals say they made a stop here for a while before they went to Algeria. Without all the documents to look through, we can neither confirm nor deny it, but it is a heck of a story. And if it is true, could there possibly be a descendant of the famous Dulcinea in this town? Could a real descendant of Dulcinea be in town today? Unlikely, but uh, maybe, I mean, Mm. This gelato is very dulce, don't you think? Yes, but it's one year only. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Perhaps this story of Cervantes and Dulcinea is best left shrouded in mystery.